There's been a lot of things going on in the uh, tech world lately. We're gonna talk about some of that today. Okay, like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on uh, lately and it's, some of it's a lot of fun, some of it's frustrating along with fun at the same time. So we're just gonna kind of dive at it right into things. First off, today is uh, November 10th and Apple is supposed to be running their conference today, uh, their One More Thing conference at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, which my time is central, so that'll be new my time, one o'clock for those people on the East Coast. And for the rest of you, those of you around the world, you can figure it out. They're expected to be announcing their uh, new silicon that they're gonna be using in what we expect to be uh, their MacBook Pro potentially, MacBook Air maybe, who knows going forward, uh, but their own silicon to be replacing um, Intel in their machines. It's interesting that they decided to go that route as opposed to putting Ryzen in their computers as a tried and true um, computer or a CPU. But uh, you know, Apple, they like to be able to control their own stuff and this gives them further ability to lock things down uh, the way they'd like them. Um, it should be interesting to see what type of performance you get for the dollars now especially considering the fact that they uh, really like to um, price mark things. I mean, it's like crazy. Like if you want to add two gigs of gram, they, I don't know, off the top of my head, it's like 200 bucks for two gigs or something crazy like that. Anyway, you get my point. I mean, that's probably not exactly accurate, but I mean, they're crazy when it comes to their markups. Uh, so this gives them the opportunity to retail the price of their own stuff because what are you going to compare it to? It's theirs or nothing. Kind of frustrating, but we'll see how this is. I'm excited for it. Uh, I would expect that this is going to probably give a little bit of a, a uh, performance increase over what the current stuff is out there with uh, Intel. And that's actually gonna be where I'm gonna lead next is Intel is just, whew, wow, are they suffering. Um, I don't know how many pluses they're on their 14 nanometer architecture, but with the latest release of Ryzen, who is basically kicking the crap out of Intel now, every point for our mainstream computers for uh, you know those of us that are doing um, gaming or streaming or whatever um, especially up to that 5950x they're getting higher ipcs uh, they're almost there on the actual uh, clock frequency if they could just get to five gigahertz that would be amazing uh, threads they're destroying intel uh, just overall performance for the most part is kicking the crap out of intel which is really good and bad. Uh, I'm hoping they don't become complacent because now that they are technically the leader, um, I hope they don't pull an Intel and just decide to not develop anymore and uh, then get into the stale situation that uh, Intel's in where they cannot uh, increase their performance or even deliver on the promises that they made that they were gonna be on 10 nanometer processing here um, as of a couple of years ago and they still haven't gotten there whereas our uh, AMD obviously is at the seven nanometer process already. Um, it's making a big difference. So go Ryzen, come on Intel, pick up. I mean, I'm not really team blue or team red. I don't really care. I just use them both and I enjoy them both. And I think that they each have had their uh, place. So there was a time when Ryzen was the uh, budget gaming processor because you know people couldn't afford that Intel. Uh, processor and then the Ryzen stuff or I'm sorry the Ryzen the uh, AMD stuff just really didn't even work well at the budget point then it was just all about whatever you could get for Intel and the Intel was always the king of gaming well guess what that's not the case anymore so really interesting the downside is you can't get any of the product um, actually I'm going to jump over to that here real quick with um, AMD right now you go on their website and you're like hey learn learn more Let's get your 5,000, oh, I'll understand. Let's get your 5,000 series uh, Ryzen processor. However, uh, this is where it gets kind of interesting. Let's go to, I've gone through all of them. We're just gonna go straight to Amazon because that's how they're gonna direct sell. And unfortunately, everything is currently unavailable. So the, the, here's the downside of what's happening with, and this is where I was talking about, there's the ups and the downs. The downside of what's happening with all this awesome improvement now for hardware is that you can't get anything. Um, the scalpers have got their bots going like madmen, and unfortunately they're buying everything that you can and then they're going on eBay and Amazon and they're scalping them at ridiculous prices. The downside are, is, downside are, downside is, downside is, people unfortunately are actually paying those prices and that's what's making this work for the scalpers, but 
kill everybody out there. Um, if people would just stop buying the stinking items, whether it's you know CPUs or the GPUs, I mean, it started off with the 10900K, right? I mean, everybody's scalping those. And then, uh, then it got to the Ryzen, or I'm sorry, the NVIDIA uh, graphics cards with 3080s, 3090s, and now the 3070s. You can't buy them unless you're going to EVGA, which by the way, I am not, you know, pro EVGA over everybody else, but if you're gonna buy a 3080 or 3090 or 3070, pretty much your best bet as a consumer is to go to G EVGA. No, the upside, amazing customer service. And they seem to have a plan to overcome the bots to an extent uh, with this getting your name on a list and when you're in queue, you have your spot. When they produce the card, they ship it to you. I mean, that's awesome. They email you out once you've uh, got your name on there and they say, okay, now you've got this window of time to make the purchase, you make the purchase and there's yours. The downside is, is EVJ has been getting a little more expensive and it appears that uh, they're just gonna continue to get more expensive because they're kind of right now the only show that you can get your stuff through. I mean, it would be awesome if you could go on to Best Buy and say, look, I'm a shopper and I wanna get the um, Founders Edition, but you can't because unfortunately they're sold out. Um, I'd like to get the, you know, right here, sold out. You can't even get your name onto a list of, hey, notify me when in stock, which kind of really stinks. Um, or you want to get yourself uh, the Asus card sold out. I mean, it's just the minute they hit, they, they sell out. And that's because of these stinking bots. And what's driving the bots are you consumers, I'm sorry, are you consumers that decide to go on and pay that exorbitant price because you just got to have it. If you'd stop doing that, if you'd stop buying from them, they'd have no reason to go out and do this. So we, or you, the consumer, not me, I won't do it, are perpetuating this problem because people buy them. It kind of sucks. So unfortunately, the 3080s and 3090s and 3070s, you can't really get unless you get on this, uh, unless, well, there's two ways. You get on the EVJ's list or you somehow get lucky, or I guess three, you're the bot. So I'm hoping you're not that. Uh, it's really kind of interesting. Coming back to EVJ, they got kind of a fun event coming up here, which I'm going to be watching, and I'm hoping others will too, because I, I like these guys. Um, I enjoy watching both of their content as it is. Uh, Steve is definitely a lot more. Steve from uh, Gamers Nexus is really the technical specifications nerd, who, honestly, I enjoy watching. Some of it's hard sometimes because it kind of goes on. It's like, okay, move to the next point. But his stuff is really, I mean, he's so knowledgeable. He knows his stuff. And then there's Jay, who also is somewhat techy, not as much as Steve by any stretch of imagination, really. But his content's fun. Um, and he makes it interesting. And he does weird stuff. And I love their Rip Jay and uh, Rip uh, Steve or Rip, Rip GM, I think is what the... Jay was calling it. I love their content that they're doing with their back and forth overclocking challenges. They're a lot of fun. And I'm actually looking forward to watching this. Um, so Friday, uh, November 20th, 10 a.m. Pacific time. So that again, that would be, I guess, uh, noon my time uh, and one Eastern for those of us that have to figure out those time zones. But very cool. I'm excited for that. Um, Coming off of this whole thing, you know, obviously Steve had done a video on, and I'm going to bring it up here. So if you like to um, get into the stuff that Steve and Jay do, I'm going to recommend that you go over and watch some of Steve's uh, stuff. He's actually, uh, in this video that I'm showing right now, uh, is um, using the new Optimus Foundations water block for... Um, the 3080 and the 3090. So that he's actually got the 3090 for the Win 3s here. I'm going to link his video uh, down below. It's a little long. It shows you some of the installation, but it shows you what they look like and some of the performance. Absolutely amazing. So uh, I think that this is a really interesting video. And because of this, I started wondering, okay, well, who all is making um, the water blocks now for the uh, 3080, 3090s? Well, if you can get your hand on the card, first off, I guess is the first hill to overcome. I mean, it's nice that someone's starting to make these blocks, but I don't know what good they're going to do if no one's got the cards. Uh, as far as for the EVGA for the Win 3 cards, because those seem to be the ones that people are actually able to get right now. 
Uh, EVJ is not made, does not have a car made yet uh, or a water block made yet. I'm, I apologize. Uh, interesting. I'd love to see it released here. There's nothing on their pages indicating if and when they're releasing. You have to imagine they are, being that they've already out, uh, announced that the uh, for the, the I'm sorry the uh, Kingpin 3090 will be released in a air version, um, I believe, uh, a hydro copper version, so a standalone, and then a hybrid. So um, those are coming. With that, I was like, okay, well, who's got them? So I jumped over, and you can get the. Um, version here from uh, Optimus right off of their website once they're available. Uh, I have two coming. Don't really know when, but I have two coming whenever they get them produced, I guess. Uh, so this should be really interesting. Uh, I'm a little curious as to how big they are, however. Steve mentions in this video that these things are some massive, um, massive cards. And when you look at his video, it kind of looks like they are as well. Um, Regardless, should be very interesting to see. Their performance, I, I would assume, is going to be amazing because their stuff just straight up is amazing as it is. Um, when I went over to Water Cooler, they don't have anything under there, but I did go into their um, spreadsheet here that actually shows, I'm gonna zoom in here, that shows their plans on what they're gonna be making, which is interesting. So like the Strix card, which you can't, you really can't get those right now unless you're gonna buy from a scalper. Uh, I have a custom uh, layout for the PCB and they're not willing to, or they don't have plans to make them out for the uh, heat killer block, but they do, oddly enough, for the For the Win cards for both the uh, 3080s and the 3090s. Now, they've already got the XC3 layouts made. They're available uh, from uh, Water Cooler with a heat killer block. I like heat killer uh, blocks. I use them on my main Genesis rig for the CPU block. I'm actually going to swap out the block that I did on this... Um, 925 build I'm doing this in win with the X570 Extreme uh, motherboard from Aorus. Um, <coughs> I'm gonna put the bits power block on there just because, I don't know, I'm making a couple changes. Anyway, we'll get into that. So they've got this that will be coming. When you get into EK's site and you go onto their configurator, which is really awesome because they say, okay, where do you wanna see what's available or coming for what? So the NVIDIA cards, uh, I just went down to the GV, GTX, I'm sorry, the GeForce RTX 3090 to see what they have being made. So when you go into EVGA and go into the 401.3, Win 3, it actually says, once it comes up, that compatibility pending. Now, the challenge is with this, uh, with the 2080 Ti, it's a compatibility pending or coming soon for almost a year. I mean, it was some ungodly time. So waiting on EVGA to produce a block, uh, you might be waiting a long time. So which then put me back towards um, the uh, Optimus one. Now, again, going back to the heat killer one, it does, uh, it did say that uh, the will be supported ETA is December of 2020. So that's really good that you actually have an ETA on that. So I, I'll probably end up getting that comparing the heat killer block to the Optimus block because why not? Uh, and I'll see which one I like to have better actually in my full-time rig at that point. Uh, but you can, this is where you can check to see what else is available from EK. Uh, outside of that, I did check Bits Power and Alpha Cool. As of right now, neither one said they had plans to build a block for the EVGA for the Win 3 um, PCB. Unfortunately, being, again, that's the only one that's available. They seem to be all focusing on the Strix cards, which only scalpers seem to be getting. So I, don't, I don't really know how that's all going to work out. And then getting onto this whole line of this, everything being available and unavailable right now really is what it comes down to. With the Ryzen launch, um, it's frustrating that you can't get anything. So all of these new builds, they have this new hardware. So Ryzen, which should be kicking the crap out of Intel now, which hopefully Intel will start getting in gear and figuring things out at some point and will become a competitive again. A competitive again. Hopefully will drive a lot of competition, which will bring the prices down, I'm hoping. Better performance, better pricing for the consumer. That would be amazing. But we have this as an option, but you can't buy. You have the NVIDIA 3000 series that looks amazing, but you can't buy. And I would suspect that with AMD's new uh, big Navi cards that they'll be amazing, but you probably can't buy them. It's really frustrating. So that's the good that this technology is finally seeing some big changes and and should be pretty amazing. Um, but again, the downside is, can't buy anything. 
So I guess we'll see what happens. Anyway, just wanted to have my input on some of the tech news that's coming up because it's some exciting stuff. Um, we'll see what's going on. I am finishing up my computer finally, and I'm gonna get benchmarks coming on the 3090s, NSLI, some other stuff. So it should be a lot of fun. Anyway, I hopefully you did like today's video. If you did, you know what to do, hit that thumbs up for me. If you didn't, you know what else to do. I hope it's not that. Uh, hit that subscribe button for me, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks. So, yeah.